It was late August. It had been a steamy shower day. At the moment the trees down the pavement glittered in an escape of fume and yellow afternoon sun. Against the next batch of clouds already piling up in in dark, broken walls and parapets, she stood out. In her once familiar street, as in any unused channel, an unfamiliar queerness has stood up. A cat wove itself in and out, but no human watch. Mrs. Drover returned. She opened the door. Light came down into the hall, but no one at the door. She went slowly into the room. She had been anxious to see how her house looked. She turned on the light across the hall. She stood dead and stared at the table. On this later letter addressed her. She died first, then the caretaker must be back. But even if he were back, did not know she was doing London today. Her call had been planned to be a surprise. So she picked up the letter which bore no stamp. It was not a circular. It was not a bill. It cannot be important, or else she would know. So she took the letter rapidly upstairs with her, without stop to looking at the writing until she disappeared in the dark. She opened the letter. Dear Caitlin, you will not have forgotten that today is your anniversary. And the day we say it, the years have gone by at once slowly and fast. In view of the fact that morning has changed, I shall rely upon you keep your promise. I was sorry to see you leave London, but was satisfied that you would be back in time. You may expect me, therefore, at the hour arranged. Until then, okay. Mrs. Strover looked for the day of the letter. It was today's. She took a look back at the writing again, and a boy sounded in the back of her head at the hour range. My God, she said, what hour? How should I? After 25 years? She was so confused. She felt that so much had changed since then. She began to wonder. Wonder about her dead husband, about her three little kids. She was nervous. She did not know what to do. So she got up and stared at me, only to be confronted by a woman of 44, with eyes staring out under a hat, brain that had been rather carelessly pulled down. She had not put any more powder since she left the shop where she ate her solitary tea. The pearls her husband had given her on their marriage hung loose round her head, now rather than Tina. And just then, a flashback came into her mind. You cold? You're going away, such a long way. Not as far as you think. I don't understand. You don't have to. You will. What does that mean? I shall be with you, sooner or later. But suppose, I mean, if you, uh, I mean... You need to do nothing, just wait. On the supernatural side of the letter's entrance, Mrs. Strover began to wonder that letters do not drop themselves in at doors of deserted house. They do not fly or walk to tables and halls. They do not sit on the dust of empty tables with the air of certainty that they will be found. There is a need of some human hand, but nobody but the caretaker had a key to their house. Noises on the basement began to be heard. Thank you.